My PhD thesis was about the effects of cropping systems on glucosinolates and selenium concentrations on vegetables. Uh, the through the presentation, I will take you through the, some brief introduction, the hypothesis and the approaches that we use, and the main results and conclusions. Before going through, I want to just very briefly say why we chose selenium and glucosinolates. Selenium is an essential element for uh, uh, humans and it has been found to associate with a number of diseases, cardiovascular diseases, it has had cancer properties, improved male fertility, boost the immune system and several others. The main source of selenium in humans is through food and uh, sources like Brazil nuts, pea, celsius, brassica and allium crops, they consider it as very good sources with high selenium concentrations, of course depends on the soil that they are produced. Uh, selenium has attracted quite a lot of attention uh, because since we stopped the imports in Europe or reduced the imports of wheat from North America, the uh, selenium intake on population have decreased and here you can see a map that uh, represents the situation in Northern Europe. Most parts of uh, Europe in the, sub uh, in the top soil has lower than 0 0.2 milligrams per kilo and uh, soil considered deficient when it has lower than 0 0.6 milligram per kilo. So most Europe basically is the soils are selenium deficient and when you are looking on the subsoil the situation is even worse. An exception is over here that with much higher selenium concentrations, which is Finland. And that is because since 1984 they have uh, implemented a national-wide selenium fortification program and since then the in population intakes has been increased. In the UK the soil con selenium concentrations range from 0 0.1 to 4 milligrams per kilo but most of the soils, more than 80%, contains less than uh, 1 milligram per kilo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, glucosino glucosinolates on the other hand is secondary plant uh, compounds that they are containing both sulfur and nitrogen. Uh, they have been found to have also health benefits and associated with anti-carcinogenic potential and main sources are found on brassica species. So we basically chose those two uh, compounds because of the health benefits they might have on human health. So my PhD basically had uh, uh, two hypotheses. One it was uh, based on selenium and the other one was on glucosinolates. And the selenium hypothesis was that we can use catch crops to reduce selenium leaching and increase selenium availability on the main crop. And we also believe that cr brassica crops would be more efficient for that purpose. And just to understand a little bit how we have, we have driven in this hypothesis. Selenium also is, also is essential for humans, it's not essential for plants uh, or is thought not to be essential for plants. Uh, it's taken up by plants mainly as, as selenate or selenite. And they are different categories of uh, plants. Most of them they are belonging on the non-accumulators. <coughs> that they are only can uptake uh, just a few milligrams per kilo of dry weight. Then we have the selenium accumulators that they are growing usually on seleniferous soils that they can uptake several thousand uh, milligrams uh, per kilo dry weight. And the third category is the selenium indicator plants where they can grow both on seleniferous and non seleniferous soils and they have the ability to uptake several hundred milligrams. Uh, selenate is believed uh, it behaves similar to sulfate in the soil system and also is transferred on plants uh, through the same system through the high affinity sulfate transporters. 
Cuts crops in general are being used to reduce nutrient leaching and one of the nutrients is sulfur. So here we can see an example of three cut crop species, ray grass, rape and fodder radish, that all of them successfully reduce uh, sulfur concentration on the soil, with fodder radish having the higher uptake. But when we are speaking about cut crops, the important thing is not only reducing the leaching, but to ensure that the availability of the nutrient uh, will be uh, synchronized with the needs of the main crop. And over here you can see the sulfur uptake by barley after a wide range of cut crops. And most of them, they have managed to supply sulfur similar with the uh, inorganic fertilizer on the top over here. And some of them, they basically were even more efficient than the inorganic fertilizer. So taking into account that the, the uh, chemical similarities of selenium and sulfur, we assumed that uh, cut crops may have the same effects on selenium in soil. The second hypothesis was that by using either cropping, uh, we may increase glucosinol concentrations. And we try to either crop brassica with lettuce in order to change the nitrogen and sulfur balance in the soil and in the brassica nutrition and therefore increase the glucosinolates. A short background behind that is that uh, one of the reasons, one of the uh, main reasons that are affecting glucosinolate concentration on crops is uh, uh, the rates of ni uh, nitrogen and sulfur. And we can see over here in a, an example in Pakoi where low nitrogen concentration had the higher uh, glucosinolate concentrations and higher nitrogen concentrations decreased glucosinolates. But when was enough sulfur in the soil, the negative effect of the nitrogen have been decreased. So we thought by using a crop like lettuce that has less demand on sulfur, it won't change the availability of sulfur for the broccoli uh, and it might reduce nitrogen and therefore increase glucosinolates. So going through the first hypothesis about selenium, we used uh, three cut crop species for the radis that is known to uptake high, uh, sh high sulfur and it has a deep uh, rib uh, system, herivate legume and ray grass. Uh, these three cut crop species, they have been tested over a three years field experiment. Due to unfortunate circumstances, we have to alter and modify the plan every year and we are missing few data from the first experimental year. So we started with two main crops, onions and cabbage, and we haven't applied any fertilizer. And as we continue in the next years, we used only onion as main crop and we have different fertilizer treatments. On the second year, we applied a combination of two levels of selenium, uh, 0 and 10 grams per hectare, and two levels of sulfur, 0 and 65 kilograms per hectare on onions. On the third year, we, we will not include any sulfur fertilizer, but we fertilize both the main crops and the cut crops with two levels of selenium, 0 or 10 grams per hectare. And for <laughs> <laughs> Those that uh, they might not know the growth cycle of uh, the cut crops. Usually the cut crops, they are sown in August after your main crop in order to reduce the leaching during winter. We did a soil and plant sample in November. The cut crops, they continue gr growing or until springtime, depends on how frost resistant were where we incorporate it on uh, the soil and then we plant it, transplant it the main crop and we, on April and we harvest them in August. All the three years uh, the experiments were carried out on the same site but on different plots. Uh, here is uh, the selenium uptake 
of the catch groups on the second and the third experimental year uh, and sulfur uptake again on the second and third experimental year. And what we can see is as we were expecting brassicas, radis, had the higher selenium uptake and also had this higher sulfur uptake and is believed that because of the ability to have uptake high sulfur is able to, it's not able to discriminate and is uptaking high selenium concentrations also. When we fertilized the catch crops, uh, the uptake was much higher in all catch crop species and selenium fertilizer didn't have any effect on sulfur concentration. Uh, I won't take you through all the soil uh, sampling. Uh, the results between the years uh, were inconsistent. On the second experimental year we didn't see any effect of the catch crops, uh, while on the third experimental year there was some effect. The difference, we believe that it was due to the difference on the precipitation. So on the first, ye uh, first year, we had high precipitation early in the season and most likely the available selenium had been leached before the catch crops had developed a deep root system. Uh, on the third year, where the weather was more mild, we saw an effect of catch crops, especially on the mid-soil uh, layer where rake grass and radis have increased selenium concentrations on the soil, uh, both when they were grown with or uh, without and with selenium. And an explanation behind that is that due to the high vegetation, they reduce the drainage water and they reduce selenium leaching. Uh, we don't believe that it was because of the uptake, because the total selenium in the soil was more than 100 grams per hectare and the uptake by uh, catch crops was less than 3% of the total available selenium. Uh, the selenium fertilizer was not changed total selenium concentrations in the soil. So then we examine every year the effect that catch crops they had on the main crop. On the first year we had two main crops, onions and cabbage. There is a tendency, not significant, but there is a tendency that, will, that is repeated that uh, catch crops decre decrease selenium concentration in onions, while in cabbage we don't observe any effect. Uh, the the reason that we don't observe an effect on cabbage is most likely because cabbage has much deeper root system and is able to explore more seli uh, soil selenium, uh, the soil selenium sink. Uh, and ignore that. <laughs> So, um, on the second experimental year, again, you can see the trend that uh, catch crops are reducing selenium concentration in onions, uh, but this effect is disappearing when uh, the main crop is growing with uh, fertilizer. So, we haven't observed any effects and most likely due to the high variation also we haven't observed any effect when the main crop was fertilized with selenium. The interesting thing that we observed it was that when sulfur fertilizer was applied with selenium the effect of selenium fertilizer has decreased so an antagonistic relationship has been uh, observed over there. Uh, it might worth pointing out here that although Hoderadis had higher selenium uptake, it didn't manage to increase selenium in the main crop in any occasion. And the reason behind that is that Hoderadis, except of high selenium uptake, it had high sulfur uptake. 
So when uh, mineralized, it delivering the soil both selenium and sulfur, and due to the antagonistic relationship, selenium uptake was not higher. On the next year, we are losing the effect that we see, the negative effect that we see from the catch crops. And again, it might, there is a possible explanation behind this, is that this year uh, we had a very severe year, so the material, uh, a very severe weather, so the material that we have incorporated, it was much less than the previous years. And this it may have affect uh, how the selenium is bound to the soil, and it might have affect the uh, chemical processes on the soil and selenium availability. Uh, so on the third year, we generally we can't really conclude any effect from the catch crops. The main thing that we may say is. In the cases that we fertilize the catch crop, uh, it didn't really, it, it didn't really have the same high effect when, rather than fertilizing directly on the main crop. That means that the, the, uh, the selenium that was available in the autumn was either bound on the soil or either released on the deeper soil layers and it was not available for uh, the main crop so it didn't basically have an additional effect on the main crop. So to the conclusions basically from this trial that it was cut crop that they didn't reduce selenium leaching and that was because of the low uptake that they had. Uh, in several cases, it seems as a trend that catch crops in general organic matter might have a negative effect on selenium uptake by the main crops. So when we incorporate material, organic material special on selenium deficient areas, we have to consider that. And for the radish also it took more uh, selenium than the other crops. It didn't manage to increase selenium concentration on the main crops. Uh, we keep going with the selenium study. Uh, because it's important not only to reduce the leaching, uh, it's important to make sure that the available selenium will be released from the plant material when we want it. We did some incubation studies, so we incorporate different plant materials with different selenium concentrations uh, on dark conditions and then we leach it with water over the season. Every uh, We started on the sixth with week after the incorporation and we continue four weeks uh, until um, uh, 20 weeks after the incorporation and we collect the leachate and we analyzed. And also we had the pot experiment that we incorporate the same material and we grow it uh, Indian mustard, we, harvest the, uh, we had two set of pots that one was harvest on 30 days and the other one was harvest on f uh, 50 days after the transplanting and we measured the availability of the mineralized uh, selenium for plant, uh, for plant uptake. So uh, we for that purpose, we grow up four cut crops. We additionally added mustard with high selenium fertilizer, and we produce cut crops with uh, uh, different selenium concentrations. And also, we had the cut crops grown on the native soil without any further addition. Uh, the material that we, we incorporated it was based on. Uh, total uh, volume of material, so we incorporated based on the dry matter uh, in order to achieve uh, three and a half tons, yeah, three and a half tons per hectare. So it's 
each pot basically was getting a different amount of selenium due to the difference both on the concentration but also on the amount yeah basically both of the concentration the salt and the sl small differences on the dry matter of the cut crops so here is the leaching incubation experiment and we have the control where nothing has been added and we have the four catch crop species uh, grown with selenium and they have been the incubation the soil have been leached of 6, 10, 15 and 19 weeks after incubation so initially uh, Hairy vets and rake grass, they had uh, the higher mineralization, the higher, they release the higher selenium concentrations from the soil, follow from the mustard and then the fodder radish. If you briefly remember, uh, the higher concentration have been added with rake grass. So you would expect that rake grass would have the higher release, but it didn't happen. Hairy vets basically release 6% of the selenium that is added compared to Italian rake grass, that it released 1% of the selenium that was added. And that is clearly shown that uh, different species, they have a different decomposition and mineralization rate from, uh, for selenium. So six weeks after the incubation, you have quite high concentrations. Uh, 10 weeks, you still see an effect, but thereafter the effect of catch crop is basically reduced without really releasing all the selenium that was available, or we, they might have released it, but not on a water extra extra extractable forms, and it might have been strongly bound on the soil, which would again mean that it's not available for uh, plants. Uh, when we incorporated the catch crop species with, that they were grown on the native soil, on the six weeks we haven't noticed any difference between uh, selenium concentration of the leachate, but after the 10 weeks, uh, basically, uh, selenium concentration was reduced compared to the bare soil and that fits quite well with the field experiment and might explain why selenium uh, uptake and concentrations from my onion was lower when catch crops. It seems that some kind of mobilization is going on on the soil and selen the available selenium, even the native available selenium is bite on the soil and is not available for the plants. Uh, here we are coming on uh, uh, selenium concentrations and uptake by Edian mustard. And again, you can see here is the control. Those four are the catch crops growing on the native soil. And you can see that is clearly a decrease on the on selenium concentrations by the plant, while on, this, on the selenium in rich catch crops they were able to provide some selenium on Indian mustard. So again that suggests that uh, organic matter in general they might immobilize selenium on the soil, whether if you have high concentrations on, uh, of selenium on the plant material, some of it eventually would be available for, uh, for the, pl uh, the plant. And you see basically a relevant part pattern that rake grass that has the higher selenium concentration, it always, it also managed to increase selenium concentration much more on uh, Edian mustard. We include also some inorganic treatments, but they have an effect on selenium concentration. So in several cases, organic material, if it contains selenium, it might be better for plants compared to inorganic, uh, inorganic forms. 
So here I'm summarizing that again, the catch crops, the organic material that may re reduce selenium concentrations in plants, and that is uh, indicate um, immobilization. Uh, that in rich catch crop species they might increase selenium concentration so it's a potential not just for the catch crop species but if you have uh, selenoferous soils that uh, you're using plant species for phytomer radiation regions you may use that plant material as organic fertilizer on uh, your plants and the effects of catch crops is lost over the time. <coughs> Very briefly the last part of uh, the talk. Uh, because my initially the results and uh, the way that things were going on my PhD were not very promising and there were a lot of problems. We included uh, the glucosinolase as an extra project on that. And what was we intercrop broccoli with lettuce on the field, and we also had monocrop lettuce and monocrop uh, broccoli. Uh, we applied different uh, combinations of nitrogen and sulfur uh, fertilizer to achieve different uh, variability on on the available nutrients, and in the monocropping. We used a minor rhizotron, uh, one and a half meter long, to record and observe the root system of the monocrop crops. Um, and also, we had a pot experiment where we tested uh, the intercropping between red leaf mustard and leaf lettuce. And for to avoid any above ground competition, we separate uh, the plants. And again, we had four combinations of nitrogen and sulfur. Um, here we can see the nitrogen and sulfur content on the soil. And as we were expecting, uh, when there was high sulfur availability, that is uh, monocropping lettuce, other sh higher sulfur uh, fertilizer, and more sulfur was remained on the soil. That's kind of confirming that le lettuce doesn't have that high sulfur uh, sh sulfur uptake, and that sulfur potentially might have been remained for the broccoli. Uh, but also it seems that it didn't have high nitrogen uptake compared to the broccoli. So the effects on either cropping probably it wouldn't have been as we were expecting. Uh, also the growth of uh, lettuce have been weak over the either cropping. Let's see an easy way to explain that. So here is the root intensity on broccoli. That's the symbols with uh, the full symbols. And the root growth on lettuce, that is the open uh, symbols. And in general, lettuce had less root intensity than broccoli. But on the top soil, it seems from very early in the season that basically lettuce were more antagonistic and it had more root system in uh, uh, the topsoil. So basically with this complicated graph that I won't go through a lot is to show that also broccoli it has much higher in root system and slightly deeper also. Uh, lettuce was had quite adequate system and possibly was a was still able to uptake uh, nutrients from the deep soil layers and probably have some kind of competition with broccoli and stress broccoli. But on the intercropping, 
that's a needer cropping, you basically barely can see the, <laughs> the lettuce. So any effect that maybe root growth may have effect f had on the soil, probably it didn't help a lot because of the shading. And just to verify here is a lettuce. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> so, and here you, it's verified from the dry matter that either cropping, it really reduced uh, dry matter production of lettuce because of shading. And here you can oh. see the difference. <laughs> Those are nice lettuce heads produced on uh, soil cropping, and when you either cropping them with uh, the broccoli, that was the situation. In some cases, it was even worse than this. So, no much competition. Uh, however, when we are looking at the nitrogen and sulfur concentrations in broccoli, in the case of nitrogen, we can see that it, either cropping has decreased nitrogen concentrations on broccoli. And that is what we wanted to succeed initially. Why it happened on the either cropping, I don't really have any explanation because lettuce definitely was not the reason causing that. Uh, it has high, high concentrations, but uh, the dry mass was so little, so the total uptake was really limited. And in the case of sulfur, either cropping has not any effect on sulfur. I won't take you through the different fertilizer levels because that would take quite long. Um, so we analyze for individual glucosinolates and here you can see the uh, total aliphatic and total idol glucosinolates on broccoli. Uh, the main aliphatic was glucorafanin, and the main indole glucosinolate is neoglucobracin. Uh, either cropping didn't ha have an effect on the aliphatics, so they were similar on either cropping with monocropping, but it had an effect actually on the idole glucosinolates and a negative effect. It's a bit difficult to see it, but if you compare this bar with the brown bars, you will see the, a, a small decrease. Uh, after some correlations that we did, we believe that it's basically of the decreased nitrogen concentration of the broccoli florets. And that is, and the difference between aliphatic and edol glucosinolates, and the reason that edol glucosinolates have been affected more, it was because idol glucosinolates, they need two atoms of nitrogen for their composition, while aliphatic, they need only one atom of nitrogen. So they have slightly more higher need for nitrogen, and even the small decrease have affected the concentrations in, in broccoli. So basically, we saw negative effects in some in, uh, on the broccoli, in, in the cropping on broccoli. Uh, so, for avoiding the situations on the field and the above ground uh, competition, that was why we had the separate boards between uh, the two plants on the pot experiment. And here is the results of the pot experiment, where a different trend it seems to happening. So, in the Pot experiment basically nitrogen concentrations was higher on the either cropping compared to monocropping. So it's a different pattern uh, produced on the pot experiment and that is basically due to below ground competition as we avoid any above ground competition. And again there was no there was no effect on sulfur concentrations. Um, so again, we analyze it individual glucosinolates for the red leaf mustard. Uh, 
the main glucosinolates in the red leaf mustard was uh, aliphatics, the aliphatic sinigrin, and then it changes on the total glucosinolates is caused by changes on sinigrin. And then some small amounts of indole glucosinolates have also detected. In uh, the case of uh, uh, red leaf mustard, it seems that either cropping basically increased both aliphatic and edol glucosinolates and you can see the higher concentrations in either cropping compared to monocropping and that is why increased also total the total glucosinolates and uh, the reason again behind that it seems to be the nitrogen availability because positive correlations in the case of red leaf mustard can be found with nitrogen. So the conclusions about that was general lettuce was a weak competitor, especially in the field. Uh, either cropping a decreased neoglucobracin, indole glucosinolates in broccoli, uh, while either crop increased glucosinolates in, uh, in the pot experiment in lead, uh, red leaf mustard and also we had some effects uh, of the fertilization levels. And basically the overall conclusion about that is that still is a lot of to learn about how different uh, individual glucosinolates are affected from different nutrient availabilities and that there is clear also a uh, species interaction and uh, uh, interaction and uh, I competition not a species effect a species uh, a, a species response on the availability of the nutrients so different species will uh, respond differently on different nutrient availabilities and it's not clear yet the whole relationship so that was all <laughs>